Hey folks, welcome back. This is the ADAS model, part 3B of the lecture. And so again, we talked about AD in the previous video. We looked at consumer spending and the five factors that affect the AD curve. We can now draw our ADAS model, label this on the x-axis, rule GDP, $19.1 trillion. On the y-axis inflation, our price level at 1.9% inflation. Now we can draw our point A equilibrium point as such and draw the AD curve, which is downward sloping and our upward sloping SRAS, short run aggregate supply curve. So again, we just looked at how consumer spending affects AD uh, all through the expenditure model where GDP is a function of C plus G plus I plus NX. And now we can focus on the other three components, that of government spending. Government spending. And we can call this fiscal policy. Fiscal policy. Now, in the United States, the Congress has the power of the purse, and the Congress has the power to tax. And those two items are exactly what fiscal policy is. Number one, it is the actual amount of money, government spending, that the Congress spends on items such as the defense, uh, the treasury, the interior, uh, things of that nature. So when the Congress decides to increase spending, either for the military to purchase more jets or hum vehicles or submarines, they are engaging in something called fiscal policy. Now, when we see an increase in government spending, we could also call this expansionary fiscal policy. But as there is an increase in government spending, we know that there is a positive value in front of G, which means that G and GDP, which are also directly related, are, going to, are both going to increase. So as there's an increase in government spending, this in turn would also increase the GDP of the economy, and this would then shift the AD to the right, all through an increase in government spending. Now, a second fiscal policy that the Congress has in its disposal is that of the income tax. Income tax. So again, we know that the Congress has the power to tax. And in order for expansion of fiscal policy to take place, the Congress could actually cut income taxes. They could reduce income tax for all Americans. And when the Congress decreases income tax, this would affect consumers, where now we are going to have more money every two weeks, every month, to go ahead and spend on goods and services. So consumer spending is going to increase, all because of a decrease in the income tax. And as there's an increase in consumer spending, we're bound to see a D shift to the right. Fiscal policy under government. The next component is that of I for investment spending. Investment spending. And we can see that investment spending is influenced by a central bank. In the United States, the central bank is called the Federal Reserve Bank, the Fed. And they engage in something called monetary policy. Monetary policy. So unlike the Congress, the Fed, they have three tools at their disposal to influence the economy. The first tool that they have is something called the Open Market Operations. 
In essence, this is the buying and selling of U.S. Treasuries. Now, U.S. Treasuries are government debt that the government are, is going to take money in today and promise to pay the holder of the Treasury at a future date, plus a small interest. Now, there are many types of Treasuries. Uh, we could see some of the short-term, such as bills, medium-term notes, and long-term treasuries called U.S. bonds. So let's say that the Central Bank of the United States, the Fed, wants to influence the economy. They could, in essence, buy back U.S. treasuries, U.S. bonds from bondholders. So think about this. When the Fed tells a bondholder, I'm going to buy that bond back from you today. The Fed is going to give the bondholder money. And the bondholder will give up the bond. So in essence, what's happening is the Fed is influencing the economy by increasing the supply of money. And when there is an increase in the supply of money, supply of money increases... Those who now have more money could actually lend that money to other companies, to investors, to entrepreneurs, to regular consumers like you and me. Now, when lending increases, that means investments will increase. And we see that investments in the GDP has a positive value in front of the I, which means I and GDP are also directly related. So as investments increases, GDP will also increase, thereby shifting the AD to the right, all through open market operations of buying US bonds. A second monetary policy tool that the Fed has is something called the reserve ratio. The reserve ratio. Typically, banks must hold 10% of their assets in case of a crisis. So if you have $100 and the Fed tells you you must have a reserve of 10%, you cannot lend, spend, $10 if you have a total asset of $100. That is a reserve ratio. So if the Fed wants to influence the economy, the Fed could actually lower the reserve ratio. Let's say, for example, the Fed says we are going to lower the reserve ratio from 10% to 5%. To 5%. What's going to happen? Well, now you know that you don't have to keep $10 at all times. Now you can keep just $5, which means you have an extra $5 that you can lend. And when you lend the $5 to an entrepreneur, investor, a consumer, what's going to happen? Well, investments will increase. GDP will increase, and then, and then again, AD will shift to the right, all through the lowering of the reserve ratio. And the third monetary policy tool that the Fed has in its disposal is something called the discount rate, the discount rate. Now, this is the rate that the Fed charges companies, banks, to borrow money from them. And it's called discount because if you look at commercial banks borrowing money from other commercial banks, they tend to charge a higher rate to borrow. So if you want to borrow money at a lower rate, at a discounted rate, you can do so by borrowing from the Fed. So again, if the Fed is able to lower the discount rate, 
there will be more commercial banks that would want to borrow, to borrow money from the Fed. And that in turn would increase the lending due to the lowering of the discount rate. Investments will increase. GDP will also increase. And AD will shift to the right. The three tools that the Fed has under monetary policy. The last component that we have is net exports, NX. And we know that NX is also a function of the following. NX is equal to the exports, what we sell abroad, minus the imports, what we buy abroad. X minus M. So if the United States could find a way to increase our exports, let's say through agriculture or manufacturing or service, if we could find a way to increase X exports, this would mean that the entire term net exports would be positive. And we know that with a positive NX, as we can see with GDP, this is going to directly affect GDP as well. So as the United States exports more goods abroad, we sell more abroad, this in turn would increase the GDP and thereby shift the AD to the right. So again, all of these three components, G, I, and NX, in this order is going to affect the AD curve by shifting AD to the right. That becomes AD1, AD0, there's the arrow, and a brand new equilibrium point of point B.